Hello and welcome back to the Only Fools Love Horses YouTube channel. It's episode three of our Cheltenham Festival Antipost series. We are joined in Ian on week one. We had James Stevens from the Racing Post on week two. And fingers crossed, we found some nice horses to go to war with in March. We've had the uh, audience naps coming through as well. And we'll have another one set up for this week. And we've got another special guest. It's three weeks in a row. We'll hopefully continue this on to March. I'm, of course, joined by the usual boys. As you can see in your bottom right, David Cross from the Noel Feely Syndicate is here. David, how are you on this fine, fine evening? A fine evening. I, it must be fine inside your house because I've been out playing golf today and it was minus nine leaving Lambert this morning and it was minus seven coming back in. So I wouldn't exactly call it a fine evening now, Ash, would you? Well, I've had the heat. Obviously, you, day, obviously you, would. you just did. Yeah. <laughs> the heating's been on all day, Dave, for me. It's been 20 degrees in here. It's just a little bit too hot, actually. I'm thinking of taking the, the hoodie off. Um, no, it's brilliant to have you here. Of course, we're joined by harry and lee as well but well dave we'll come to you first uh, you know we're, we've got you on you've got this noel feely syndicate running and it's going supremely well it's been going well for the last couple of seasons now um obviously you had love envoir win at the uh, at the channel festival last season i want to sort of highlight that to start with really um you, you I, see, I see you on race days i don't know if you see me much i'm in the press room and i see you on race days whether it's leicester on a tuesday or newbury on saturday you're always there with owners always making them smile can you just sort of describe what it meant to have a Cheltenham Festival winner last season? Um, obviously, that was a dream come true with Love Envoy because, look, Cheltenham is the, however people want to talk it down, it is the be-all and end-all, and that's how we see it. You know, we want to end up with Cheltenham with all our syndicate of horses, um, but, you know, the majority won't be good enough. Um, but to win with her, like, she is a special mare, and she took all her owners and myself, Noel, and a dream ride last year like when we purchased her we thought she'd win probably two races over three miles in the depths of winter and she just kept on progressing the whole way through and um she wasn't actually going to run on the thursday at cheltenham last year she was declared on tuesday we we're going to see what the ground was like on thursday wednesday the heavens opened and we did, myself and Noel did a video dancing in the rain sent it to the <laughs> owners and we didn't even ring them to say she was definitely running i think they they knew she was and um yeah the stars was aligned she she traveled like a good thing the whole way around jumped didn't miss a beat obviously johnny burke gets on seriously well with this mare because she's he makes her look an easy ride now having said that she probably is an easier ride this year but when she went up that hill and won like you know i had a winner at Cheltenham festival as a jockey 20 years before last year and it took 20 years to get back into that winner's enclosure do you know that's how hard it is to do it so to do it on year two and a half into myself and all setting up was um unbelievable yeah as you said there you had a Cheltenham festival winning yourself as a jockey i've got it here on my screen the bush keeper for nikki henderson the and the kim Yo, you beat a certain gordon elliott who was riding for martin pipe in third and Davy Russell was on a horse further down the field. Can you kind of like sort of describe the two differences in, in emotion you have between winning in the saddle and then winning for so many people that were sort of involved in the syndicate on, a, on, a, on 20 years later? Well, Davy Russell and Gordon Elliott in behind, like obviously second class jockeys to me, <laughs> um, as I was champion amateur that year. But to ride a horse at Cheltenham, I was 19 years of age. I was having a real good season that year. I had a pick of five or six horses to ride. And I remember a jockey that was riding at the time, Marcus Foley, said, um, have a come down, ride this horse. He won his previous race. He had legs like glass and um, went down, sat in him. I remember I rode him a bit of work, ran away with me, went down to jump a line of five fences, ran away with me, and the whole way through, and then rode him at Cheltenham. And when you're 19, you were riding the favourite, went around the the inside the whole way, jumped a lar like a six-bar gate and um, went up the hill to win. Now, it was unbelievable feeling, but probably didn't know the magnitude of it at the time and came back in, you know, great, road a winner, on to the next day and probably didn't. And that's the way racing is. You're always thinking about the next day, not what's been. Um, and I always thought then, as any young jockey, you know, 
this just happens every day of the week. Do you know what I mean? I'll have another couple of winners next season when I turn professional conditional, another couple of the year after, and that's the way it goes. But it would have probably meant more to me um, at the end of my riding career, having been through the mill with broken bones, etc. cetera. Um, it would have probably meant more to me then than actually winning. But as a jockey, um, it's great when you ride a winner and things like that. But as an owner, 10 times more work goes into it. Like if the horse is no good as a jockey, you get off at the end of it and say, say whatever you need to say. And then, you know, you move on. You're not taking that horse home and feeding it as where um, if a horse runs bad as a syndicate owner, you got 10 owners, 10 partners with long faces. And, um, you know, you've got to get the, get the best out of that horse, you know? So it's a, completely different dynamic um from the owner's side from being a jockey side but riding horses was a lot easier let's put it like that yeah, definitely and we, we've already sort of touched on Lo love envoy there and she's made a fantastic start to this season i may as well sort of segue into that she's she's won a handicap at the start of the season when carrying a, a nice weight there and she's done it with ease and she's then followed up in a listed event at sandown next time i suppose you can't really be complaining at her preparation heading into the Cheltenham festival she seems to be firing all cylinders already yeah um obviously she was a little bit late starting this year um because the mayor's program on the first half of the year is not great um and then we couldn't we did have a race we we're actually going to go to ask it first time out for the coral uh, the coral hurdle and um ground was too quick as as we know and um we ended up starting in a two mile handicap against the boys carrying top weight as well now we did we fancy her did she train on there was so many questions to answer that day and i think she she does the talking for us and after that we had two races mapped out before we get to cheltenham uh the first one was obviously at sandown in the listed race and there's a race at warwick but there is also now a race at doncaster on saturday week as well over two miles which will give us longer to cheltenham it's actually worth fifty thousand as opposed to the warwick mm -hmm. one is over two five and worth thirty thousand. So we're seeing how she is at the back end of this week. Um, whether we make an entry at Donny, if we make an entry at Donny, we're likely to go there, and and that could be highly likely. But you know, we we've had a plan. It was always going to be three runs festival. She thrives on racing, and then we'll take in Fairy House, Aintree, or Punchestown um, at the back end of that. Now, David, obviously a good winner last year. There must have been a few celebrations after the race. Looking to this year, the mayor's hurdle, the big one. There's got to be some planning of celebrations going on if she goes on and wins this one. Never plan celebrations. Till <laughs> um, They're, the best ones. They're the best yeah, ones. Uh, yeah, well, we will be. We, we Last year, now, for any big winner we have... Um, we actually went down to Woods Restaurant down in Bath and all our owners, trainers, Harry Fry team, Johnny Burke, we all came down, played out the race. We had dinner, we had a bit of music. It was, we had a brilliant night and we're actually doing the same again on the 1st of March for Tamers, uh, for winning the grade one at Sundown um, recently. You've got it. And one thing when we do have a big winner, um, one thing we're making sure we do with the owners is that we celebrate with them because big winners are very, very hard to come by. Everyone's probably yeah. looking and thinking, geez, no feeling David Cross there flying and all that, but so much work goes into it. And when, when you're riding, you're always thinking about the next day. And I'm always thinking about the next day, where our next winner is coming from and things as well. But we're a little bit older. We have a bit more time to a degree. We got to celebrate him now. So 100% we will be having a party. Um, but Are I, we invited though? Are we invited? <laughs> until she wins that hurdle race on um, 14th of March. Now, is it is it kind of, is it different? Obviously, it is different. You, you mentioned there's added pressures on not on the jockey side of things now, but the, the role that you are in now. How different has it been or how hard was it to adapt from obviously riding and then into kind of more of a formal role and sorting owners out and et cetera, et cetera? Kim... A transition that probably came quite naturally in the sense that my last five or six years riding, um, my, well, seven or eight years, I had to do other things to subsidize riding because you make no money as a jockey. So I used to do a lot of um, car balloting and things like that. Then got into the hospitality and ended up being all right at talking, as you can see here now. And uh, <laughs> 
So, um, so I got into, got into doing hospitality, did one course, which was Warwick was my first one. And now I do 20 courses. So well used to speaking to people and things like that. And I was where myself and Noel started out was I was actually sponsored by, um, a couple of syndicates before, which I realized that these people didn't know the heads from a tail from a horse. I hope they're not listening today and <laughs> know how to run a business. So when Noel retired, like you get forgotten about this game and obviously Noel had a brilliant career. Um, so I said, come on, let's do something together. We've known each other for 27 or eight years now. And, um, he had a yard down at his place. He was going to do the pre-training. He has a great eye for a horse and two heads would be, be better than one. So I do a lot of the looking after the owners, getting the, um, getting the owners in through my hospitality side of things. And Noel has his place. So it, it works out absolutely brilliant. And then, you know, at race planning, everything else we know and how every yard operates. So we know how Nichols trains, how Henderson's trains, how Fergal trains. So when we purchase horses, um, we send them to the trainer that's going to suit that horse better, um, suit, suit that horse best. And that's the absolute key to the business, you know? I, I, suppose, I suppose just finally, finally for me, me um, day one on Love, love, love Envoys, you, you go, go into, into the mare's hurdle, we've got some strong horses coming into it this year, you know, Marie's Rock, a Cheltenham winner already this season, she was the mare's hurdle winner last season, she looks quite sort of strong at the top of the market, I suppose you would have had a look at the mare's hurdle market, had a look at your potential competitors, how would you sort of assess your competitors coming into this year, assess your chances, especially if the ground sort of turns up good to soft sort of area? Um, I would not be worried about the ground this year, whatever happens. Last year, over two miles won um, on the same track. It didn't really, um, the rain was a big key to her winning on that day. We were contemplating last year entering her in the mayor's hurdle as opposed to novice because it was over two and a half miles. If the ground, it, it, it won't be any quicker than good to soft. If it did over two and a half miles, wouldn't bother me in the slightest. As regarding the opposition, I think they should be fearful of her rather than us fearful of Everton. We can only get our horse there. Obviously, we think we have the best horse in the race. She's definitely improved this year. She's gone up already about 10 pounds um, in the ratings. And um, with a potential to it come a lot more like she won in the canter the other day, She'll win in the canter when she goes wherever she goes next week. Um, so I wouldn't be looking at figures so much. Obviously, if Brandy Love beat us at Fairy House when she was fresh, um, we were a race too many. We should have only finished fifth or sixth in that race. Only that Love Envoy is so bloody tough. She ended <laughs> up finishing second um, that day. So I wouldn't be afraid to take um, Brandy Love on again. Obviously, Maria's Rock, very impressive. Um, she's won a couple of grade ones now and looked impressive the other day. And um, But again, I wouldn't be afraid to take her on. Um, you've Echoes in Rain, Honeysuckle, any of those mares, if they turn up, Epitant. Epitant is probably the one I'd be fearful of if she turns up in that race, which is probably highly likely when Nikki finally supplements her um, into that race. Um, he really did drop a bollock um, by not entering her. In that. <laughs> That's going to cost him a few thousand pounds, which is quite funny, really. Um, hopefully he doesn't put up our training fees as a result. But um, <laughs> yeah, look, you're going to be, you're going to be um, fearful of her, but she'd be the one I'd be fearing most, um, but I wouldn't be worried about the rest. He might slip in a couple extra grand there for beating Epitone on line, potentially. Um, I, I suppose we covered Love Envoy there well, and maybe one of your most interesting horses coming into the, the, the festival is Tamuras. He's a grade one winner already in the Tolworth, and he's looking like lining up for the Supreme. Let's roll back to that Tolworth victory. Um, there's a few people crabbing the form on, on line and a few columns. What did you make of Tamuras' victory? He maybe didn't jump the second last, I think, potentially with as much slickness, but he showed good engine to sort of carry on with that and build up his momentum again and, and power on through the line. Look, horses are there to be not until they go and do it. Um, and you'll go to all the Cheltenham previews, they'll all say that. That horse put up a serious performance, won very easily from the turn in, which is a full furlong before the second last. Harry had the handbrake up on the horse, right? Did not want to get there. 
too too early. He buried him in um, into the boards of the second last, and he half fell through. This horse is a serious, serious jumper when you're going forward on him. He was going backwards on him from the point of turning in. So jumping is not a problem um, in, um, whatsoever um, for him. But what impressed me most about that horse was how strong he traveled. I don't think he liked that ground. Um, he wants a bit of nicer ground, fast run race. He's unbeaten. They've only given him a rating of 138, which is um, 10 pound lower than basically any winner's ever gotten that race. But if we were going for a handicap, we'd be smiling, but we're not. We're going down the novice route. We think he's good enough. And until he's um, stood in that parade ring and something's finished in front of him, um, you won't convince me otherwise. I suppose you are going for that, Supreme. I've spoken to Paul in the past and spoken about the horse ahead of the Tollworth, and now you're going into Supreme Hurdle where you've got this facile Vega at the top of the market for Willie Mullins. What looks like at this stage, so many people, uh, an immovable object, as Harry believes with the tattoo on uh, on a certain part of his body. Um, what would you be making of his chances coming in, Supreme? You obviously rate him very highly there. You think he's a very, very good animal, which unless he's beaten, you can't really argue with, but you have got facile Vega at the top of the market i suppose both horses there in a sense they're there to be knocked until they're beaten you, you you're facing the irish coming in from willie mullins and you've got this really nice horse what would you make of his supreme chances Fasal vega obviously a serious chance would you back him at 11 to 10 on no i would lay yes. him all day long <laughs> at price because at even money and have the field against him i'd be laying him at that price he's a worthy favorite he's a talking horse um, and obviously people are crapping his um, victory the last day in the grade one at Leopardstown as they are Tamaris and people will be knocking him but any odds on shot at Cheltenham deserves to be laid um, if you have any brain because um, you know you have the field of quality unexposed horses unbeaten horses going into it um, yes you would be fearful of him all day long I know Willie Mullins just absolutely loves this horse um, you know, two miles around there, could that end up being sharp enough for him and things like, um, you do have to stay well, which he probably does too. Um, you know, he's got, he's got it all in front of him and he's got it. He's like Tamaris. He's got it all in front of him. He's got to go out, do it. You know, Marine National won well at Fairy House. Obviously if the other horse of Willie Mullins is, there's stacks of horses in there with untapped, um, potential Lucia. She looks very smart, but if she doesn't go for the mayor's novice, I'd be very surprised. Um, American Mike, he was second in the bumper last year. You know, this it, it'll be, as always, a serious, serious race. 14 to 1 hour horse. I would not put you off him because I have serious belief in this horse. And like if you look at the ratings, you you just draw a line through him straight away. But he is a lot better than that. The most okay. impressive thing when he won at Sandown pricked his ears like just if you ever think that harry didn't have the handbrake up i think you were a blind man if you stevie wonder even seen that do you know what i mean and um he would handbrake up and when you when you're not going forward over the last few like a horse can stop in two strides he's come back in the bridle and as soon as he landed in front over the last like he's cocked the jaw he's he's green as grass like he's still a big big baby and um, but at the same time he's he's there when you want him if any time with him when you give him a slap, if you go back and it's worth going back and looking at his point to point, he made a running that day and he was being ridden on from, as a four year old from a long way out because he wasn't doing a stroke in front. Every time he gave him a slap, he went shot two lengths clear. And then every time he'd stop riding, then he'd come back and then you give him a slap again, you go forward. He only does what you ask him to do. That's why he was so impressive how well he traveled the last day. So. I mean, just a quick one as well. Oh, right. 14 to 1 winner for you. No, they, you know, <laughs> just talking of the price, 14 to 1, you've got horses in there, Imperative Pass, Champ Carly, Irish Point, Gaelic Warrior. This field could quickly cut up and 14 to 1, you're not going to probably see that for very much longer when the horses do start you, coming in that. So it could be a very overpriced. Yeah, our horses have a serious, serious follow, following and... I can tell you he'll be single digits um, come the morning. If he gets there in one piece, he will be single digits. So I would definitely wouldn't be putting you off. Are you almost saying he's a good thing, David? <laughs> Are you almost saying he's a good thing? I am saying back him now and lay him on the day. 
<laughs> I was going to just ask, uh, what what's his temperament like? And uh, so will he hand him the hustle and bustle of uh, the festival? But um, obviously, uh, with him winning this sand down, does that stand him in good stead with uh, the hill and stuff like that? Would you track everything? He is so straightforward. He won around um haydock he won around chepstow big galloping track stiff track at sandown he's kind of run on every track and every type of ground um so far temperament wise absolutely fine except when he comes back in from his summer break and noel has to sit on him um noel generally rides him there because he's he's a bit of a boy when he's in training early in the summer and that but um, can you not handle him has he got to go to noel <laughs> i leave that i leave that to the to the old fella to do uh, <laughs> just a quick one as well i mean if you can give me 20 to 1 as i, I did mention i got fasal vega tattooed on me at 20 to 1 so if you can give me 20 where, where to did one, you, oh, sorry um where tattooed where did you get that uh on the oh, rear end yeah, on, the, on the rear end yeah on the yeah, rear end on, it was a drunk cheap. mistake i was passed out on drunk. a boat party now happened. while we're on here any other drunken mistakes you'd like to tell us about uh, no, well, Ash has got most of, his, most of his selections on a Saturday. <laughs> and he, he loses his wallet every week, and all that's uh, you know, it's just awful, absolutely awful from Harry. You should going off getting tattoos on your backside now. now you'd be better off in a boy band, you would. No, no, you... I can sing, I can sing. <laughs> are you saying, Dave, are you saying that um, Harry should get a tattoo tomorrow's 14 to 1 while the price is still there? Is that you're trying to tell us? No, yeah. um. He can do if he wants, but if I don't it wins, see if that. it wins. <laughs> um, final, final thing for me on on Tamuris. Obviously, we've got plenty of talk to, with this horse. Hopefully, you know we've got the Supreme, and then what happens after? I just want to look a little bit at what happens after because uh, a piece I did for Gloucester Live. I spoke to Paul, uh, Paul Nichols there. I spoke about where he could go, sort of in the future, and he said that he definitely wants two and a half miles plus going down the line. Uh, he'll he'll be staying well to win a Tolworth as he showed. Um, he's won a point to point over three miles. We'll get this race out of the way, and then we'll make a plan. Could you see a, a future where he steps up in trip, uh, maybe next season, or if he goes over fences potentially next season? Last summer time, I thought we'd win probably a novice hurdle over two miles, and then we'd step up to two and a half um, with a penalty. He'd win, and then we'd see where we take us. That's where um, how we saw that horse last summer. Um, because he can just drop the lot and he's such a good way of racing, you could run him over any trip. Um, as I said, he showed a lot more speed the last day. He's done it on a speed track, on a staying track, Haydock, Sandown. Um, I see him going to Cheltenham and I'd imagine we'd probably go to Punchestown um, for the grade one after that. That's where, that's where I see that horse. And then we'll be starting him out over two miles over fences next season and jump out make all his couple of first novice chases and then where we go from there he'll be telling us no definitely that's that's brilliant no thank you very much and i suppose we'll, we'll, while, we, while we've got you you can have potential other runners at the Cheltenham festival you know a couple, couple more lined up in the handicaps do you want to sort of share what they might be um yes we will potentially run rebels hill speaking to harry fry um earlier this week uh he's he will have an entry into kim your chase um i see he's uh our third favorite um for that at the minute mm -hmm. um he is second season chaser with us um ran a great race at ask at two five first time he was having a spin um just to put him spot on then went for the london national where just things just did not happen for him on the day still finished fourth so he's got a handicap rating of 138 guarantees him a run so i look back to his forum this week pointed out to harry that he has got a mark of one two two over hurdles so <laughs> he will run in a hurdle race probably the middle part of next month as a prep run but hopefully a winning one at the same time and but he and then go straight to Cheltenham. now he is a horse that is 100 better in the springtime on a bit of nicer ground um <laughs> So whether he can go win over hurdles off lower mark, it is something we will um, exploit at some point because I definitely think off that mark, um, he's a winner in waiting, but probably more so in the spring. But we would be looking for the Kim Muir, um, and then he would have an entry in probably the Scottish National. There's a big four-mile chase at Punchestown, and I would see him 
as a Grand National horse next year for the main Grand National. Um, he just wouldn't be man and he wouldn't have been quite man enough this year. He just need that second season chasing. Um, and obviously, I think off his mark, there's a very big handicap chasing him this year. And then that'll put him, we'll be working back from the national next year. Then I would have thought with him. That's brilliant. He's already got the form in the book, you know, three starts ago, he, he beat the two amigos and that horse has gone on to win the Welsh national at Chepstow. So that's, 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 that's pretty good. That's, that's great signs heading into something like Cheltenham for potentially the Kim Muir. You can't really be complaining with that one. Well spotted. <laughs> he knows, I, David knows. He does. Look at this grin on his face. He knows. He's happy. He's happy. He did. He did yeah. a little bit. Of, he did a little bit of homework there. <laughs> I am very happy with my form book homework. And then just finally, before we come to you, uh, have you got any more runners at the chance? Um, we may potentially have one or two more. We have a couple of nice mares, but the handicapper has been quite generous towards them. Um, hmm. So we'd be probably working back with a mare called Royal Dance, probably run at Huntington next week. Um, I think they've rated her 30 pound lower than they should have. And she'll go for a look at your man smiling up there. Goes for a handicap at Huntington next week. And then we are going to the mayor's final with her and another mayor called Queen's Rock with Nikki Henderson. One mm. first time out. Yeah. She bled last time, but we've also done her wind but there's a 50,000 pound handicap at Kelso um, at the end of March. Um, so there are two nicely handicapped horses um, once we get them right. And we may run a horse in the bumper called Camsnas, trained by Fergal O'Brien. Um, we were due to go hurdling this year because he was going to win his bumper at Kelso, only he got brought down turning in when it looked like he was definitely going to be in the mix. Now, mm. we'll probably end up just keeping him to bumpers this year um he will potentially run and hopefully win in the next 10 days and if he does that he'll have an entry because he's a hardy horse in the bumper um which you need to have and um he's a six-year-old now as well so um he he's, he's he's an interesting one of the big odds wherever he goes but if he does end up at cheltenham that means he wins next week <laughs> that's that's brilliant and the final sort of thing on our running order um we're going to do a little bit of champion hurdle chat now love envoy does have a champion hurdle entry it's it's quite obvious she won't be going there she'll be going to the mayor's but we'll talk about the sort of horse at the top of the market constitution hill and we'll sort of look at it from a different side you know us three have had our opinions on a uh, on, on constitution hill the, the people we've had on they've had their opinions and now we're coming to, to you dave as, as an ex-jockey and now someone working that closely with horses Constitution Hill, he looks this sort of freak of nature for Nicky Henson. It's just going to be really exciting to see him in the champion hurdle. Yeah. Just be a boring race to watch, to be honest. Um, whatever jockey finishes second, um, he's the one that should be getting the pat on the back, not Nico de Boinville. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think? Do you have an opinion on what might finish second? Um, Love Envoy won't. Um, <laughs> he'll be winning. Um earlier in the day um or later on today in fact um but yeah no look we stuck an entry in there look if the mayor's hurdle race looks seriously hot and epitant honeysuckle all them if they all went there and you could finish second in the champion hurdle that's all you'd be doing um yeah. if you turned heavy on that ground could we do it look we stuck the entry in but we're going mayor's hurdle winner but you mm -hmm. know you have to you have to have all options um, covered. What's going to finish second to her? Honeysuckle finishes second to her. Eight to one, unbelievable price. She wins at the Dublin Racing Festival um, next week. Yes, she does. She does. You're right. And then she will be um, four to one, taking over from Statement. So look, there you are. Eight to one now is great value about her because that's what I believe she will do. And she shouldn't go for the mayor's hurdle race if she if she's going for anything she's got to go champion um i think that they did come yeah. out and say that but they still suck an entry in the mayor's hurdle race but um you know she is a champion and she'll go out in a championship race as opposed to the mayor's race and hopefully henry the problem does listen to this <laughs> one question one more question for you if constitution hill some some for some reason comes out of the champion hurdle yes which is which is very very likely would love envoy go would she reroute if it goes soft ground are we all sticking every penny we've got on love envoy? <laughs> no 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is her. If she went and won the mayor's hurdle next, you like, do you want to win a? The question is right. We've got the best mayor in England, I believe. Maria's rocks. Right. So owners will probably disagree. We can go to Cheltenham. We're a second favorite, four to one, fifty to one for the champion hurdle. Do you want to finish second in a champion hurdle, or do you want to win a mayor's hurdle? How many times um, do you remember? Who was second in champion hurdle last year? Um, it F-tom. was. F-tom. Yeah. Yeah. It took you four seconds to answer that. Do you know what I mean? It does, because I was who, was second, who was second the year before? Uh, yeah, it was Epitone again. Yeah, wasn't it? it was a... Okay, let's go back three years then when Epiton wasn't bloody around. <laughs> it would The only horse I ever remember to finish Shaza. second. Shaza. The only horse... Yes. <laughs> the only horse I ever remember finishing second in a champion hurdle is, and it probably be before you boys were Archibald. born, that was Theatre World. Uh, which which champion hurdle was that? He was second to Isterbrack three times, uh, also yeah. trained by Aidan O'Brien, ridden by Tommy the Tank Tracy. Um, <laughs> but look, you don't want to go out. No one wants finishing second is the first loser. I see trainers tweeting up, will remain nameless. Oh, we had a great second today. No one actually cares. All you care about is having a winner, and that's the that's that that's what yeah. that's what you should always be about. I suppose also just breeding aspects as well. If you can get that grade one black type on her name as a, as a winner in the mare's hurdle, that could be wonders for her breeding going forward. Yeah, she's she's got loads of black type. Look, mm. I, um, Annie Stallion would be signing her up. For, um, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the boys will be queuing up at the door for her when we decide to go down that um that route with her. But um look, yes, we'd love to win a grade one with her. We would love to win at Doncaster or Warwick next week. Mm-hmm. And if she does that, we'll be happy. And then we'll look at it's always one race at a time. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So that's the way we look at it. Fantastic. And we move on to our final section here. I, I think I could guess the colours that the horse will be napped for in this, but if we can have your sort of best sort of fancy for the only fours of horses listeners at this current stage of the Champion Festival, it can be no Feely Syndicate or not, or you can give us one or one or the other, you know, you can give us both if you like, but what would be your nap for the Cheltenham Festival at this current stage? I know you're saying Cheltenham Festival, but oh. that's a long time away and everyone needs <laughs> Everyone needs a bit of money um, in yes. their pockets before then. Now, I don't know when this is getting aired, but I'm telling you to back Royal Dance at Huntington in a handicap hurdle off a mark of 109, I think, on Friday week. Um, and for the Cheltenham Festival, I would say Love Envoy at 4-1 to one to win. I would not swap her for anything. And each way, Tamaris, yeah, at 14-1, to one, uh that's that's absolutely brilliant no uh, honestly massive thank you very much for coming on dave you've been absolutely incredible uh, i hope you've enjoyed your first appearance and and really good luck to the noel feely syndicate over the next couple of months cheers lads and best luck and um hopefully you'll get that new tattoo harry very soon <laughs> thank you yeah, very much um we'll be cheers, moving on to us cheers we'll be moving on to our second part of the uh, section now but thank you very much dave and we'll, 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 i'm sure we'll chat to you soon thank you very much that was brilliant. Thank you very much, David Cross, for coming on. The Noel Feely Syndicate there. Uh, he, was, he was a character, wasn't he, Harry? And we've, uh, we've had our guest on, and we're going to move on into the, to the free races we're going to be covering today. He certainly was. He certainly gave me an absolute rollicking before we came on about my haircut. Now, it is horrific. I do apologise. I've not had one for about two weeks. So, yeah, he's fair, he's fair enough. He is David Cross at the end of the day. And I am Harry Beard, a 19-year-old sports journalism student. So. <laughs> No, he's absolutely had you there, Harry. Um, we're going to be covering free races as we usually do here. We've got the one, the big ones that we're going to be covering, another very big one, and then we'll move on to a novice chase. But the first race we'll be talking about is the big one on the Tuesday, the champion hurdle. Uh, it, it doesn't doesn't it would surprise you as topping the market, as we all know. Constitution Hill is in there, at three to one. On for Nicky Henderson. Looks like Nico de Boyne will get the ride if nothing serious happens to him in the time. Uh, State Man 9 to 2. Honeysuckle 8 to 1 there for the reigning champion. Uh, Vorban, Epitont, but she looks like she's going to the mares. And you're looking at bigger prices there. So Gerhard 33s, uh, Bob Ollinger 40s, Echoes in Rain 50s. I'll come over to you firstly. He's talking about the champion hurdle. 
it looks like Constitution Hill is going to win. We had the same discussion about Fasal Vega for Supreme Hurdle. Um, where would you be sort of thinking? Would you would you be playing in the race? Let's put, let's, let's go to the first question there. Would you be playing in the race in either an each way position or in a without Constitution Hill market? No, because look, you're already losing a place in them each way market. If you think um, Constitution Hill is going to win, um, you're already losing that 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 win place. So um, look. Constitution Hill, um, I, don't, I, don't, I can't crab him at all. Um, obviously, bolted up in the fight in fifth. It didn't, it, look, it, he's went and beat Epiton again in the Christmas hurdle, so I haven't really learned much, but he's done it easily again. I can't see him beat. Um, I wouldn't, look, I'll play a forecast on the day. Um, I've already got half, you know, half a decent bet, I would have said, um, rolling on. And um, he'll be in plenty of doubles and trebles. But look, I can't say him beat. If I had to take one without the favourites, I maybe would play Vauban. But I think um, State Man was just that bit uh, better streetwise the last day. Vauban um, needed the run kind of thing. Um, Clatt had a few, was in behind Sharjah and kept getting um, maybe distracted, I would have said. Um, at the angle of the camera is a bit uh, dodgy there over at Leperstown, so I couldn't re- quite see. But I just thought if I had a bit more daylight, Vauban would have uh, been a little bit closer. So maybe I'll take Vauban. Um, we're yet to see uh, whether Honeysuckle will go and win the um, Irish champion and whether she'll even get to the race. But um, yeah, look, I can't see Constitution Hill beat. It's simple as look. And he does. I've not. I've not mentioned your castle yet. He does run in black and white colours, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Harry, we'll, we'll keep this sort of quite a short conversation. It's Constitution Hill who wins. Could you give me uh, the second and third as we record? We record on the seventeenth of January, twenty twenty three. So we're recording this a fair few days earlier than we're going to actually upload now. So we've got a bit of time. Um, but the seventeenth of January. What is your one, two, three with Constitution Hill in the one position for the champion hurdle? Uh, it- Probably keep it nice and simple, Ash, to be fair. I'd go Constitution Hill by a distance. I'd go Honeysuckle in behind and then a distance behind her, I'd go Statement. I'll oh, have that very Harry, similar. Go sorry, on. I was just going to say that. So you think she'll go and win the Irish champion? She'll yeah. definitely then get go and um, face the challenger, Constitution Hill, and come second? I think so. I think, yeah. I think, she'll, win on, I think she'll win next week. But right. then she's got, to, she's got to go and beat uh, Statement and... For Bannon, and obviously they're mine behind anyway, so there you go. I think there you <laughs> want to I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sort of go very similar to Harry. Honeysuckle second. I have Vauban in third rather than Stateman for me personally. I thought it was a very good run uh, the last day. Um, but obviously, just uh, obviously first run of the season, Stateman already had that run in coming into it. So I'd have Vauban coming in at third. Um, w- it's a very sort of sharp whistle stop tour there on the Champion Hurdle, as it should be. And we'll move on to something that looks a bit more competitive with a few more angles for the betting. And it is the Mayor's Hurdle, grade one, uh, directly after the champion hurdle and Marie's Rock topping the market five to two. Brandy Love, who hasn't been seen for this season so far at nine to two. Uh, Love Envoi, who's been given um, the shout up of all shout ups there by David um, for a nine to two. Echoes in rain tens. She wears it well. Twelves. Honeysuckle is there, but she won't be going. Tell me something, girl. Fourteen. She was interesting on a, a chasing debut. Could be very interesting. See her come back over hurdles. Um, I'll come back to you, Lee, uh, just to talk about the mares. Would you be as confident as David? On uh, on the on the shout of Love Envoy for this competitive mare's hurdle. Well, look, I did put Epiton up in our start of the season video. Um, I thought she would go down this route. Obviously, it just has to be something invented now because of um, an error there. But <laughs> I kind of went off. Her. I think she do come out in the 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 new one, um, the Champion Hurdle Trail at yes. the weekend as we're recording. Um, she'll be short for that. She'll probably go and win it, but that's over two mile. Um, look, I have it now between Love and my and Marie's Rock. I do slightly favour Marie's Rock. Sadly, um, I'm glad Dave's not on to slate this year. But um, look, I think it's between the two of them. I think um, Marie's Rock has showed plenty. Um, won it last season. She's reappeared and beat the boys. Um, and beat them well, and it was good form. That um, great would win her. I like to move it. Them type of horses in behind and well beat. First Street who had won the Jerry Fielding before that. 
um, off top weight. He was a long way cooked and Dassel Drasser and stuff like that. Solid yardsticks. I think she'll win it really well. I think she'll go here and I think she'll go to punch us down and probably take that too. But um, I definitely think the, the danger is Love Envy. I, I, I love the way she went about the race the last day. Um, look, um, it, it, it was... It was a good it was a good run last season, obviously win the Cheltenham, but it's a different kettle of fish going into this race. And look, she's definitely battle hard and I think she's a type that'll run through a wall for you, to be honest. I have it between the two and I I would favour Marie's rock, to be fair. Harry, what do you make of the mayor's hurdle this year? Um, I can see the case for Marie's Rock and I can also see Love Envoy. Obviously, Love Envoy has done absolutely nothing wrong. Um neither yeah. is Marie's Rock. She's had her last three runs have been two grade ones and a grade two, and she's won all of them. So you can't really knock her at all, and you can't knock Love Envoy either. But the other one that I do like is the man that's is for a trainer who's won the at the last fifteen times he's won it. He's won it nine, and it's Willie Mullins. Okay, so Brandy Love for me looks to be an absolutely massive threat in this. I, I think she's being over overlooked in the market nine to two. Now she the last time we saw her was beating Allegory de Bassi. Uh, not Allegory de Vassi, Love Envoy by eight lengths. She got beat by Allegory de Vassi when she was jumping left at hmm. her obstacles. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. But obviously, the return to a left handed track should suit and Cheltenham should suit her as well. So for me, I think this switch back will, will see her in an even better light come March. Um, now, Willie, he didn't really have the strongest hands in the race last year. Echoes in Rain and Stormy Island, they were both in fourth and fifth. And they were only beaten about five length, five lengths. Now I'd imagine Brandy Love's got five pounds on the pair of those two, so I'd imagine that she she'd probably put it up to Marie's Rock if that performance was to happen again. I think she's nine to two. You're probably not going to see a, a shorter price than that unless the unless the money comes steaming in because she is likely to go there fresh. But obviously Willie's already tried and tested that route. He's not afraid to send horses fresh to Cheltenham with a winning chance. So for me. Brandy Love at nine to two. She is probably at the minute. She's one of our strongest plays. That is very, very interesting. There, Brandy Love, and it looks like I'm going to be sort of taking you on as a as a free here because I'm going to be siding in the Love Envoy camp just at the current prices. I I completely agree with everything that David said. I think she's just a different mare this season. You know, she's only seven, so she just turned seven in the new year. But she was six when she was doing her winning at Dece in December in the handicap. At Sandown to carry that weight against the boys was really really impressive there running to an RPR at 146 she's then done it again on the 7th of January at Sandown as well you really can't be knocking her um, 9 to 2 and I, and look I, I've said this Marie's Rock's performance on New Year's Day was really really nice like genuinely really really nice you can maybe pick one or two holes in the form Dash or Drasher being the one that was in second and I like to move it was down the field over probably the wrong trip but it is it is all the right horses she's beating she only can only beat what's there for her and the price reflects that at 5-2 but I just do think that Love Envoy 5-1 to one, I wouldn't be having any issues of backing her at that price so it'll be sort of a little freeway going on here taking each other on at the head of the market the one I am going to put also sort of talk about uh, who's a little bit sort of disrespects in the market in my eyes is Echoes in Rain now I believe they're going to go over to this sort of distance they went champion hurdle last season when she no they went mayor's hurdle last season sorry when fifth behind marie's rock um just isolating that performance alone she was hampered when indefatigable and tell me something girl fell coming down the hill she had to move around them and she stayed on a line there she then go and finished second to honeysuckle and i actually thought at one point uh, in the paddy power champion hurdle at punchstown she was going to go and beat honeysuckle i thought at one point and then honeysuckle went on a one by three lengths she's then gone had um a sort of a little bit of a flat sort of summer and she was second Second at the Curra, she then won at Galway for for Patrick Mullins. She was then second under Rachel Blackmore and the Irish Cesaro, which did a really well handicapped and a brilliant ride on Waterville. And then she's gone and fell in the Hatton's Grace. Now, if you actually go and look back at the Hatton's Grace, uh, when she falls, I believe it's two out. No, two out now. Yeah, she falls. She's actually a length behind Tiupu there when they're jumping. Tiupu's just landing and she's setting off. She's about a length off there and she falls at that hurdle. So who knows how close she could have gone at the line there. But even that form there of Honeysuckle in third, Tiupu in uh, winning the race, obviously, and Classical Dream in second, you have to really like that piece of form. And 10 to 1 for me, 
echoes in rain i'd be uh yeah i'd be happy to take that now and i'd be i'd be really interested to see how she can go uh, in the mayor's hurdle again give her a second crack that's what i say um we'll quickly move on to the final race national hunt chase we're gonna be covering uh the final race on the tuesday i have a lovely record in this from last year statler oi oi um and we've got another short price willie mullins horse at the top of the market gaia de Mainil, obviously irish grand national third last season coming in at 11 to 8 chemical energy sixes joey colon tens ramillies 12s melena crooner 20s i suppose the first point we need to highlight here lee before going into it there are a few horses towards the top of the market who aren't qualified most notably jerry colom uh, ramillies i am maximus Kilcrut, Milena Kruna, they're all not qualified because they haven't had that second run over three miles over a fence. Um, a bit worrying if you're backing these horses, and there's two Donnelly horses in the fact that is Ramillies and Gaia de Mainil. What would you be playing in this race at this early stage? Do you think Gaia de Mainil is the worthy favourite? Definitely the worthy favourite. Um, look, I, I did think maybe it's, um, just because of the last two uh, runs won well the last day over um uh, sorry grade one there and i thought maybe they'll parachute them into the um brown advisory mm. um but look ramillies in the same color same connections isn't currently qualified so then you're kind of losing a dog i'll 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 sorry I'll, I'll interject here he's not currently qualified but he's not entered for the two mile five novice chase or two mile six novice chase at the dublin racing festival which in my eyes indicates the fact they're going to go to a three mile novice chase and try and get him qualified that's how i would personally read it anyway because guy domain neil who is qualified is going to that race at the dublin racing festival i think is the is the one at nace or something like a 10 up or something chase um, over, yes. um you know the, the trip that needs to be hmm. um look yeah um I, i'd have him definitely as favorite i'd be wary just in case he did go brown advisory I've had I've had a bet in the race that I backed um, Chemical Energy at around tens or so. Um, so I'm happy so far with that dot. It's it's been a while since we've um, seen chem Chemical Energy. Did see that they'll go straight. Yeah, Gordon's got a good record in the race. Um, look it, again, it, it's it's a long time since we've seen him, so we don't really know what's happening with him. But um, I think them two at the top of the market are the ones to concentrate on. I hope Jerry along goes uh brown advisory anyway so I, I wouldn't want him coming here i'd be i'd be sick as a chip if he didn't go the brown mm -hmm. advisory um but yeah look so far i'd say gallard is the right favorite and chemical energy um for a yard that's got a good record in the race as well um is is, is a worthy second favorite as well the rest you just have to wait and see what comes out no yeah definitely um harry I think I've worked it out. I think I've worked out Willie Mullins' bingo for novice chasers this season. Uh, no, I, 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 I think, um, I think Guy Domain will go to the Brown Advisory. I, I, I kind of worked out. I, I kind of worked out all in my head. I think it maybe does. I, I think as much as my heart and my betting slip on William Hill wants him to go there. James de Burley is going to go to the Turners. I, it, it looks like it. Anything you hear, you, I, I watched the Let's Talk Racing uh, video just an hour ago now, um, and it looks like the, the Daryl Jacob doubled up on his comments saying the Turners is the most likely option, which is absolutely sickening. Um, but it looks like James de Burley is going to the Turners. Whether appreciate it steps up or stays at the Arkle, who knows? It doesn't really matter at that stage because they have one for the Turners. And then you're thinking, right, okay, We've got two Donnelly horses here for the same trainer, so you're going to split them up. Do you send Rimini to the Brown Advisory? No, because he wouldn't have a hope in hell, in my opinion. And I, I like this horse at the start of the season, but he wouldn't have a hope in hell in a, in a three-mile grade one novice chase at the Cheltenham Festival. So you're thinking, right, he's National Hunt Chase. Guard de Mainil, he hasn't actually ran over the sort of extended distance that you'd like for this trip since his Irish uh, Grand National third. Since then, he was second to Mighty Potter over two and a half, and he's won a three-mile novice chase at Leperstown. We saw him gallop in the Champs last season. He didn't run at that three-mile novice chase trip. He ended up going to the Turners. So I think that Gard de Mainil, personally, in my opinion, is going to go to the Brown Advisory, which would leave Ramillies going to the National Hunt Chase. What do you think of that, Harry? I was, still, I was, can I interject there? So what, yeah. Ash, what, what do you think Patrick's raid would be in the National Hunt Chase then? 
uh, well, that leaves by a power of deduction, Ramillies, I believe. Just, yeah, Ramillies, that's be not, not quali currently qualified. Well, he, he'll get qualified. I'm more than I'm more than hopefully get qualified somewhere. Anyway, Harry, still won't have a chance. No, not really. Anyway, let's I be mean, real. It's one of those races. I mean, if if you're napping anything up, you're absolutely mental, and you just want to leave this race so far away and just go. We'll get to the Tuesday and we go. It's ten past four. I've had six losers. Now, do we get stuck into something on the seventh seventh race? We probably should. <laughs> if Guy Dominil comes here and he's five to four, you're probably thinking. We might have a good chance of getting everything back here if he's a, if he's still odds against. But no, for me, just leave this race well alone until we actually know who's actually going to turn up. We don't know what horses are qualified, what horses aren't qualified. I just this. If I'm being totally honest, I couldn't get <coughs> ten shades of the proverbial about this race right now. I will say one thing. I will say one thing. Um, Ramillies, I, I I like this horse. I put him. He can't stars. string two runs together though. That's my only issue with him. With one, good, one good run, but then he's just like, well, all right, not going to do it anymore. I, I'm not sure I believe that. I mean, his form is fair. It, it's a win and then something that something goes wrong, but it's always a win in sort of a lower level and integrated company. And it looks like it probably might be the same unless he has to get qualified for this race. Um, the only thing I'll say is that if they do end up going uh, Guy de Mayneil for the National Hunt Chase, I said at the start of this year, I saw Ramillies as a Kim Muir slash Ultima horse, and I did have a small little bit at 25s on for the Kim Muir. I would not throw that ticket away now, because he got an RPR of 146. He, I, I, quote me if I'm wrong, and do, do let me know in the comments. I can't find an official rating for him yet, um, whether that's because he has to have a certain amount of runs to get officially rated, or whether he has to be entered into, the British race, uh, into a British race to get assessed by the British handicapper. He hasn't got a rating, as what I can see, and he's been given an RPR of 146. I'd say now, the handicapper, the Irish handicapper, or even the British handicapper, would be very harsh to give this horse more than 150. And I know that means if he gets anything between 146 and 150, he doesn't go to the Kim Muir. I completely understand Damn that. He was off 138 in his Herdley days. Yeah, I know, precisely. And he's, he's won his beginner's chase over three miles by two lengths. But I'd, I'd say it'd be harsh now to give him a rating higher than 145. I know the Irish tax coming over is going to sort of maybe handicap him out of a Kim Muir, but say he runs in the beginner's chase and doesn't run very well or runs and finishes second or third, I find it really hard for the handicapper to give him more than 145 here. And you know that the Irish prefer the Kim Muir rather than go to the Ultima, but I am basing this purely off the Kim Muir now. And I'd say he still has a running chance now. I wouldn't say it's a million to one that he goes this race. And if not... Why not throw him into the Ultima? There's nothing that says in that rule book. If you go through it, there's nothing that says Irish horses can't win this race. It does. It, it quite it clearly does. says in Times New Roman in font 35, it says it on this wall right here, Irish horses can never, ever win the Ultima. That's what it says. But I have, I, I, I'd actually argue that the Ultima could be a better race for him. The way he travelled into his Albert Bartlett, I'd, I'd actually argue that he, he could run better in something like an Ultima. But it looks like the Kim Muir is what the Irish love to come over and have a go. And that means that Patrick would get a ride in the race as well. So I genuinely wouldn't have it a million to one that he goes to the Kim Muir, but we will see. In my heart of hearts, do I think Rumi Lees wins the Brown Advisory? No. In my heart of hearts, do I think he wins the National Hunt Chase? Mm. Mm, not really, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, my actual selection for the race, Chemical Energy wins the lot. You can have what you like. <laughs> after um, all that, after all that. After, after all that, I'll tell you, after timer, get whatever Twitter accounts you want after timer me. I backed him at 16 to 1 after he won at Cheltenham. I instantly got onto uh, my my app and got and got on some money there. So I know he's 6 to 1. I know it's, I won't be backing him at this price now, um, but I say Chemical Energy is a live runner. Right, fantastic, gentlemen. We've gone through the three races. We'll quickly cover our naps for this week. Uh, we'll get the table up at the end of the video, so we won't have it now. We'll get the audience nap in as well, so I'll, I'll point my finger to the screen when I want the tables done, Harry. You, you better do that table. Um, I'll come over to you firstly. What would be your uh, Cheltenham Festival nap at this uh, three, week three stage? Look, I'll get another one of uh, my... Stronger fancies, maybe he's on the board. And Vosalie for the um, Hunter's Chase. Um, I just think it's definitely a spring horse. We're, we're seeing it at, um, just before Christmas there. It ended up 
getting up on the lane to beat, I think, was a, was a Solomon Gray, I think, or something. Um, was that but, at Stratford? Um, no. It, um, uh, one of the Irish tracks, I can't remember what off the top oh, of my head. Okay. But uh, no, it, it, it won a Stratford I, um, last season. It, it, I ah, think yes. it's won that race twice. And it'll go there again, probably. It'll go um, Cheltenham, punches down, and then on to Stratford. It's a spring ground horse. And uh, it, I think it done well to, to win the last day, to be honest. Um, I wasn't expecting it to see it out um, on that type of ground. But um, I think it's done well to win. And look, it is favourite now. I put it up um, when it was a uh, second favourite, double the odds way back when, but I'll get it on the score sheet. So, Vosely for the Hunters, cheers. Lovely. Thank you very much, Lee. Harry? Mine is Brandy Love for the Mayor's Hurdle. She will be primed. I'd Where say. is she? Listen, as as in, in Lee's accent, she's making dodgy films. Um, <laughs> films. <laughs> that was good, was it? That was good, was it? No, that was terrible. <laughs> but no, Brandy Love, uh, she'll go there fresh. Willie's got an incredible record in the Mayor's Hurdle, obviously with Corvega winning it six times. Listen, I think she's she's overpriced. She's being overlooked in the market, 9-2. to two. You'll probably still get on the day. I wouldn't be surprised to see that far off. So, But for me at this stage... Oh, she's one of my most confident picks. I think you can oppose the other two. And listen, Willie didn't win it last year, but I think he's got a bigger chance this year. So we need to have a bet on this because we've got three different ones for the mares there. So we'll have to have two mares. Lads, you know there are horses priced bigger than ten to one that you can put into this table. And just there, there isn't there isn't a rule. Uh, my first one was twenty to one. Il Ritorno, it's now fourteens. I've moved the market. <laughs> well, listen, I've got two different horses. This I've had three weeks, and I've only given two horses. So I must be doing some. And you've still got three losers. It's absolutely incredible. You've done some absolute stern work there, Harry. Well done. Um, I'll give you one for the Mayor's Noise Hurdle now. Uh, long-time fans, or well, just just sort of people that have followed my account for the last couple of months, will know I like Bella Tiller for this race. Still think she's got uh, a good chance now. Um, I think she'll improve on her second the last day, and she's already got that Cheltenham experience behind Pie Piper and Night Salute. Uh, but I'll give you another one from the Henry de Bromhead stable. I think this has a really sort of really interesting chance now. It's Belle the Lioness at twenty-five to one. Uh, I backed her the last day at uh, Turlers in a listed event won by Liberty Dance. Go and watch that race again because she gets a real sort of difficult trip all the way around. Um, she doesn't jump the last two hurdles with too much fluency, but just have a look at how she stays on. Liberty Dance is already five lengths ahead pretty much by the time that Bella Lioness has jumped the last. And they're sort of just moving along and she's sort of staying at that same distance of five lengths where Liberty Dance is getting ridden out and Bella Lioness is staying on like an absolute training, looking like a real sort of sharp one now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where she goes. Um, the race is going to be named in Jack de Bromhead's honour, I'm correct in saying that. Um, so it'd be brilliant to have Henry de Bromhead. He said, uh, I, I think I remember when uh, the news was announced, he said he was going to try and do a Willie Mullins and throw as many horses into the race. Um, so it'd be brilliant if he gets Bella Lioness to the race. Uh, she's entered actually again uh, on the 22nd of uh, January. So this video will be out after it, but she's entered uh, at Turles for a maiden hurdle over one mile seven. So it'd be very interesting to see how she goes there, so that's Bell the Lioness 25 to 1, and the table is on your screens here. There we go, I'll sort it out. Table's on your screens here, so there you are. Have a little look at them. Audience Snap as well will be included in there, and we'll have I'm going to do a different one now. The Audience Snap is going to be here. No, here, there it is below me. The Audience Snap is there, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please do like and subscribe. Uh, Lee, we've got a competition running on Twitter to win some nice Energumen m merchandise. Yes, but that will be long gone, Ash. Yeah. By, the time this, by the time this goes out, so um, someone would have already won an yeah. Energumen. So well done, well done um, you. Whoever it was, well done you. Well done you. Yes, well done to... <laughs> um, no, we've got a competition every week um, from Racing Tees. They kindly uh, give us um, a prize every week. They give us all of our um, kind of merch and uh, do a really good job. Definitely visit them at Racing Tees. And um, yeah, we'll have another competition. Um, someone's already got this in there. I mean, we might see him in the Clarence House um, mm. at the weekend if the Frost doesn't get in. So um, when he smashes Edward Stone. Big Eddie, yeah, big Eddie three runner race. We'll we'll not get into that, but um, yeah. <laughs> look, thanks to um, thanks to Dave for coming on, and um, how are you, the lads?
No, it'd be, it'd be brilliant. No, thank you very much for watching. Uh, the last two Antipost videos, as I'm seeing on my screen now, uh, the first one got 77 likes, and the second one has currently got 51 likes after less than two days of upload. If we can go for 100 likes on this video, probably the first time we got 100 likes, actually, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, if I can ask for 100 likes, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I'll get another support. tattoo. <laughs> Harry will get a hundred likes tattoo on his arm. Uh, no, if you can get that, that'll be absolutely amazing. And uh, as as always, thank you very much for the support on the videos. If you did enjoy, please do like and subscribe. Go follow us on Twitter. Our handles are on the screen now. Uh, go follow Only Fools of Horses Racing on Twitter, and we'll see you again for our next video in a couple days' time. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>